Before we start this video, a large thank you to Wong, a name I unfortunately cannot pronounce. Thank you for the support, my friend. Mr. Domino, Chris, and Orca for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And an immense thank you to Halo Burner for their support of the channel this month on Patreon. It is greatly appreciated, my friend, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, everybody. And today, we're going to add directional base damage animations to a project. So let's go to the take damage effect script, and let's add a play directional based damage void here. Um, you call this directional damage based animation, whatever, as long as it's clear to you. And as the title suggests, we're going to make this play an animation depending on where you get hit from. So I'm going to make it require a character manager. We're going to call it character. And then inside here, I'm going to say if angle hit from, and I'm just going to put in some values here. Now I'm going to say beforehand that I tested these values, and this for me works out to be um, forward, forward, uh, left, right, and backward. So you might need to change these, but you shouldn't, honestly. They should work for you. They're pretty universal. I'm just basically getting the angle of the attacker uh, in relation to the person who's being attacked. So the first one is if the angle hit from is greater or equal than 145 and less than or equal than 180, then we're playing from the front. Likewise, if it's uh, less than or equal to minus 145 and greater or equal to minus 180, it is still the front. Um, you'll see why we're going to use sine angle instead of angle. Um, and then we're going to say if it's greater or equal than minus 45 and less than or equal to 45, it is in the back. Uh, and then we have lastly the left and right. And first we have if it is greater or equal to 144. And then if it is less than or equal to 100 and or sorry, 45. Uh, and then this is going to be the left side animation. And then lastly is the right. So we're just going to say else if is greater or equal to 45 and if it is less than or equal to 144. So just the inverse of that. And this will be the right. So we're going to basically play an animation after we pass this angle, but we're not actually passing the angle yet, nor do we have the animations. So the first thing I'm going to go do is uh, go over to the character animator manager and let's make some variables for these different animations, uh, specifically being the front, back, left and right. I'm just gonna make a header called damage animations. And I am going to make these public so we can reference them. Uh, public string. And again, if you're weird about uh, accidentally changing the variables, then you can just use a getter and setter for these as well. I don't like to do it because quite honestly, I find it very overkill for all these things, but I know it is a good practice to get into. Um, so if you wanna do that, by all means, you could also just make a function to get these strings and then make them private. That way you can only get them by using the function to return a string. But for now, I'm going to make these public variables. So public string hit forward medium underscore 01 is equal to hit forward medium underscore 01. Likewise, hit backward underscore medium 01 is equal to hit backward underscore medium 01, etc, etc. You'll notice I have the medium uh, keyword there. That stands for the intensity of the damage because in the future, um, I'm going to show you how to also play a different damage animation depending on the intensity of the hit. So a higher intensity damage uh, will play a higher intensity damage animation. Now back over on the take damage effect script, you can simply say character dot character animator manager dot play target action animation character dot character animator manager hit forward medium. And then you can do the same here for hit forward medium again and then back and then left and right. Now we're only doing medium for now because this video is just covering the directional base damage. We'll do intensity base damage on top of that when we do the poise system. And for those of you who don't know, I assume you don't know if you're watching this video series, poise determines if you play a staggering animation or not. So if you're not uh, staggered, you will not play a staggering animation. So if you poise through the hit, basically you don't get stunned. All right, so I am going to jump back over here to the character animator uh, manager script. I see I've spelt this wrong, so I'm gonna correct that. Hit right medium 01. I'm gonna save that, and that looks good. So. What we need to do now is actually call this function. So right here where we're saying this code or this comment rather play a damage animation, I'm going to call play directional based damage animation and pass our character. Now this works. Right now we always play a damage animation and right now we're locked into this one animation. So we're gonna change both of those things um, by checking first if our poise is broken. And also we're gonna make a variable for string damage animation and we're just going to, I actually think we already had that. Yes, we do, it's up here. 
There we go, because we also have a field for manually selecting a damage animation, which we'll use in the future. So we're just going to say damage animation is equal to, and then we're going to go and get the animation directly, uh, like we just referenced it as if we were playing it, but now we just have it there just to reference later into play. And I'm just fast forward a little bit because I know you don't need to see me type all that in again. So if we scroll back up here, we have poise is broken is equal to false. Well, for now, we're always going to initialize that to be true. So we're going to say poise is broken is equal to true. And we're going to make a little comment here to do comment in the future. We're basically going to calculate if our poise is broken. And then if it is, we're going to play a staggering damage animation. So right below here, we're going to say if poise is broken, we're going to simply say character dot character animator manager dot play target action animation and we pass the damage animation we've selected. Now, why did I make the damage animation a local variable like this? Well, obviously you need to have it if you want to potentially manually select it. It has to be a local variable, but also now we can basically just choose an animation from a list of random animations and it just makes the code a bit cleaner, nicer, just a little bit more modular. So we're going to do that in a little bit, but first let's actually go into the animator and set up our first volley of animations. So if you have the straight sword pack from the asset store or any of our packs, you have hit reactions for forward, backward, uh, left and right. And if you don't, I will link some on screen or in the description rather and show an image on screen now where you can get some free ones, um, potentially Mixmo or whatever I have there. But if you have these, just go ahead and drag them in now or your animations into the animator and give them a name that's going to match up to whatever you have in the character animator manager. So you can see here, I have hit forward, backward, left and right. So I'm just going to set these up and I'm just going to call mine again, like hit right, medium, uh, hit left, medium, hit forward, medium, and hit backward, medium. Now, if you intend to do different intensities of damage in the future, then give them a keyword right now for medium, heavy, light, uh, whatever you want to say, a colossal. In Nephilim, I use ping, light, medium, heavy, and colossal. It's a bit overkill, though. You don't need that many, I don't think. But if you're just going to have one, which is fine, too, you don't need that keyword. But if you want to add the intensity in the future, so changing the damage animation intensity based on the intensity of the attack, then definitely add that keyword because it will be used. Um, okay, once you have all those in, just make your transitions back to empty. You might want to check your transitions too to make sure they're not trans, uh, translating back to an empty too fast. And then when you're done that, hop back over here now into the take damage effect. Make sure we're checking for dead. Yes, we are. Okay, that's good. I'm going to hop back over here now into the melee weapon damage collider script. And we're going to say right below the contact point, damage effect dot angle hit from is equal to and we're just going to simply say vector three dot sign angle and what we need to do is actually make this in respect to where the attacker is standing uh, so we can say transform dot forward and then where the target is standing so damage target dot transform dot forward and vector three up and we should be good to go so i am going to save this now and then i am going to jump over to the play or take damage effect I'm going to go in here on our play directional damage animation. Just checking this over real quick. And right up top here, I'm going to say if character is not owner return, because this is attempting to play an animation and that will call a server RPC. And if we're not the owner, we can't do that. So that's all we need. Now I'm going to go back over to the character animator manager and also throw a debug log here to make sure we're playing the right animation in case I spelled it wrong and we get some kind of error. Because if you spelled it wrong in the variable list and it doesn't match up to what's on the animator window, you will get uh, an invalid layer index. Okay, so there we go. The right one is playing. If I go to the, the left of this gentleman, yes, it is playing. And now if I go in front of him, no, it is not. Okay, so I think I've messed up. Let me try this again. Yeah, it's definitely messed up. Uh, okay, so the problem is here I'm referencing the transform.forward of the straight sword. It should be the transform.forward of the attacking character. This is different in the case of projectiles, but for melee attacks, it's always safe to reference the character. And now you can see backwards and forwards are working as intended. Okay, cool. So what if you don't want, or sorry, what if you want more than one animation and you don't want to repeat the same animation twice? Uh, so you want to give it a bit of a random variation. You have three or four if you wanted to. Well, let's just use two for the sake of demonstration purposes. And we can still use the same animation because we can check in the debug log if it's repeating or not. So I'm first going to make these uh, variables here serializable fields, and they're going to be private. So we're not actually going to reference the direct animation anymore. We're going to use lists, and similar to how we handle uh, other random things, we're going to make a function to choose a random selection from this list, 
Um, but we're going to check first if it's already been repeated or rather if it's the last animation we played. And if that's the case, we're not going to repeat it. So let's make a serializable field for a list of type strings, as in strings of the damage animations. We'll call this uh, forward underscore medium underscore damage. And then you can initialize that at a new list and then do the same thing for your backwards, your left, and your right. So what are we doing here? Well, we're going to make a list for each direction and intensity, uh, just the direction for now because we don't have any alternative intensities. And then we're going to, on start, add all of our damage animations to each of these lists. So for example, if we have two forward damage animations, we're going to add both of those to the forward dam damage animation list. Uh, likewise, we'll do the same thing for backwards, left, and right. So let's make a protected virtual void start here and do that. Now, after we've added all of these animations to our lists, and remember, make sure you add each variation of these. So I'm just gonna actually make a uh, clone of every one of these animations and just change it from one to two. And this will be the same animation, but we'll know if it's not repeating because we have, we have a debug log on our character animator manager, and it will tell us the name of the animation in the console when we play it. So although the animation itself will be the same, it will be a different reference to a different variable, which if you have it set to a different animation means it will never repeat. That's basically how we're going to know. So again, I'm just going to duplicate all of these here now, and I'm going to change one to two. Um, if you have two or three, even four animations, that's cool. On Nephilim, I use three of each different direction, so there's a bit of variation there. I'm not sure how much Souls uses or Elden Ring, but... Um, so we're going to say forward.mediumdamage.add, and then we add the hit forward medium 01, and then we do it again, and we add the hit forward medium 02. So that's it. Just repeat that. You can copy and paste it and replace the keyword forward with backward and then with left and right. Just make sure you're doing both the list and the variable. It's very easy, especially when you're coding for a long period of time throughout the day to just copy and paste things like this, skip over it and actually put a backward animation into a forward list or vice versa. And then you think your math is wrong or the way you're calculating your angle is wrong, but it could just be the animations. So definitely take your time and watch what you're doing. I'm very guilty of working uh, at a project for long hours in a day and messing something up like that. All right, so once that's done, save it. And I'm just going to minimize this now. And then I'm going to make a new function on this script. I'm going to make it a public string. And I'm going to call it get random animation from list. Now you could call it get random damage animation, but we can reuse this in the future if we ever wanted to for something else. So we'll just make it require a list and that's it. Um, so for this particular one though, we, we are going to keep track of the most recent damage animation. So I guess actually you can't reuse this one, but you can modify it and use the same logic. So let's make a list inside this function called the final list. What does that mean? Well, we're going to edit the list that we give it, but we don't actually want to edit it directly. So we make a copy of it and then we edit that copy, which is the final list. So for each item in the animation list, we want to add that item to the final list, making it a perfect copy. And now we can edit this final list without messing with the actual list that was passed through. All right, so what do we want to do? Well, we want to check right now if we've played a recent damage animation in this list. So let's say you, you're you passing the forward damage animations and you just recently played forward damage animation 01. We want to check for that animation and then remove it. So how do we do that? Well, we make a public string variable up here for the last damage animation we've played. There we go. This is also why we have a local variable on the take damage effect because now we just pass that to this right here. So over on the take damage effect script, we simply say right down here where we play our damage animation, character dot character animator manager dot last damage animation played is equal to damage animation. There you go. Okay, and now right here, we have a way to check for this. So we can say final list dot remove last damage animation played. And if you want to, you can just keep track of the last animation played by keeping track of that in play target animation. Um, and that way you can just, if you attack after you get damaged, say you can play that damage animation again. Um, both ways are perfectly valid, whatever you want to do. So I'm then going to do the same thing I've done before for our lists. I'm going to iterate through the final list dot count. I'm going to check for null uh, references or null um, variables in that list. And if there's any null selections in that list, we're just going to remove them by saying if final list i is equal to null, final list remove at i. And that just removes the null selection completely. Then I'm going to make a comment about this just so it's clear what this does and why it's here. Check the list for null entries and remove them. 
And then all we do then is use a random dot range to select an animation or list, but we only have one. But if you have more than one, you would say int random value is equal to random dot range zero and final list dot count. Now that should work. I'm going to say return final list, and then we're going to return the random value. So it just gets the list and then the random value from the list and it returns that specific animation. Now we need to actually call this. So let's make our lists public. And if you don't like that, what you could do is make them private and then use a function to get them. Or you could even make an enum for the direction and then make that function require a direction enum. And then depending on the enum, pass that specific list back. There's a million ways to do this. Just do whatever way you like the most. So up here now, I'm going to say character.animatorManager and I'm going to call upon our function, which I've already forgotten the name of, get random animation from list. And then I'm going to pass the forward list because this is the forward angle. So I do that by saying character.characteranimatorManager forward medium damage, and that's it. Now I'm gonna copy and paste this, do the same thing here, put forward here, I'm gonna put backwards here and then put left and then put right. And that should be working as intended. So you can see now how this is pretty easy to expand upon. If you wanted to add a dozen animations for each direction, you could. You'd definitely be there while I type them out and add them to the list, but yeah, it's very easy to select um, an animation from the list. And it does add a bit of variability to the game, which I think goes a long way. So let's save that. Now I'm gonna copy all the animation states and paste them. And again, I'm gonna change one to two and make the animation transitions back to empty. A note here, guys, if you're using the clone and you've added new animation states, uh, save the scene. I find that sometimes helps if they're not loading up into your new project or edit a script and then um, basically save Visual Studio so it recompiles and they should appear there. But if they don't, you might just have to rebuild the project um, and just reclone it, I should say. So make sure you change right here too on your list, ones to twos. I forgot to do that when adding them to uh, the start method and then save that. Now, if I go into the game, I've made a dummy character just with regular character scripts instead of player scripts. You can see, yep, that plays the... Uh, backward script one or the backward animation one and then it plays two and then it plays one again so it's never repeating you can see hit backwards medium one hit backwards medium two now we're doing right two next should be right one yes it is perfect it's not repeating now this should be this is forward medium one so this next one should be forward medium two and i missed that one whoops and yes it is so it's not repeating and lastly this should be the left damage animation and that's left two so the next should be left one and yes, it is. All right, there you go, guys. So you have a system to play damage animations based on the direction of the attacker. And you also have some random variability there. So it won't repeat itself if you have the animations to do so. And for those of you looking for more damage animations from us, we plan on releasing a bunch in the future. Don't worry. And I don't know if all of you are my discord. If not, you should totally join. But if you've seen the stealth animations I've been posting recently, when I get around to it, uh, when the rest of them are all done, I'm going to update the animation packs. So if you have the bow or the spear or the shield or any of the packs, you'll get a full set of locomotion stealth animations for crouch walking and crouch running. Okay, guys, thank you all very much for being here with me today. I hope you all have a lovely weekend and we will talk next week.